Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as equilibrium and the free energy change. This is also the second part of bioenergetics video. The link of the first video will be given in the description box. So let's start. As we know that human beings are made up of cells, and the cells are isothermal in nature. That means that the change of temperature is nearly absent in living organism. So the work done in living system is not dependent on the change of temperature. Rather, living cells are dependent on free energy. And this free energy will be converted into adenosine triphosphate molecule, which is also called as the energy currency of living organism. Now we have two different type of cells within living organism. One is the autotrophs like plants that they will take this free energy from sunlight. And the other one is the heterotrophs and they will take this free energy from food they eat. That includes carbohydrates, proteins and fats. In order to understand this free energy, let's take a general equation. Now in this equation, we have reactants A and B, which is going to make product C and D. In this equation, we can see that this is a two-way reaction. So C and D can also make A and B. At the start of the reaction, the concentration of A and B will be higher and the C and D will be lower. But as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of A and B will go down and the concentration of C and D will go up and they will reach to a point where no further reaction will proceed and that point is called as equilibrium. Now in order to find the equilibrium constant of this reaction, we can take this equation in hand. So in this equation, we have equilibrium constant here and that includes the concentration of the product divided by the concentration of the reactant. Now, the force that is driving this reaction towards equilibrium is the free energy change. Now, we have two different types of free energy change. One is called as a standard free energy change that is represented by delta G naught or delta G prime. And the other one is the actual free energy change, which is represented by delta G. Now, the standard free energy change have certain criteria there. And to meet that criteria, we need initial concentration of each component needs to be one mole. The pH of that system needs to be 7. The temperature needs to be 25 Celsius. And the pressure of that system needs to be 1 atmosphere. If those criteria are met, then we have a standard free energy change. So this is a standard or constant value. On the other hand, the actual free energy change is a variable. So that depends on the pH, temperature and pressure of that system in which the work is done. Now let's discuss the relationship of the standard free energy change with equilibrium. The equation that are going to relate these two terminologies with each other is this. So this is delta G naught is equal to minus RT natural log of equilibrium constant in which R is the gas constant and T is the temperature. Now, by looking at this equation, we can relate the equilibrium constant with delta G naught. Let's say equilibrium constant is equal to 1. So delta G naught or free energy change will be 0. If the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, then the value of delta G naught will be negative. And that is representing that this reaction is a spontaneous reaction or called as exergonic reaction. If the value of equilibrium constant is less than 1, then the value of delta G will be positive. That means that this reaction needs energy and this reaction is called as endergonic reaction. So just by looking at one value, we can understand in which direction the reaction is proceeding. Let's take a real life example to understand this thing better. So we are going to take this equation that is glucose 1-phosphate is converting into glucose 6-phosphate. Now this is again a two-way reaction. So the equilibrium constant of this reaction is 19. Just by looking at this value, we can see 
that the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, which means that the delta G naught value is in negative. So this reaction is exergonic. Make sense? Okay. Now, we know that human body have different type of cells, and they have different type of conditions present within those cells. So we need to know the actual free energy change or delta G value, and their relationship with the standard free energy change. The relationship between the actual free energy change and the standard free energy change can be represented by this equation. Now in this equation, the concentration of C and D and A and B is not equal to one mole, rather they are the actual concentrations present within that system. Now, for example, this reaction proceeds and it reaches to the point of equilibrium. At that point, the delta G value will become zero. And if that's the case, then we will have the same equation that we discussed before, and that is the delta G naught is equal to minus RT natural log of equilibrium constant. By looking at this equation, we can understand one thing, and that is that this is the actual free energy change that is going to decide whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. So if the value of delta G is negative, and delta G naught is positive, the reaction will be spontaneous. Let's take a real life example of a burning wood. Now this is a highly exothermic reaction in which we have lots and lots of heat energy and light energy and this wood is converted into carbon dioxide and water. But this reaction has a high activation energy. Once this activation energy is passed, this wood is converted into more stable product and that is carbon dioxide and water. Similarly, inside human body, we need to release this activation energy and that is done by the enzymes present within our body. Now these enzymes are going to lower the activation energy and will help the reaction to move forward. Now as we know from the previous video that the delta G value is a state function and that means that it is independent of the pathway of the reaction. So the enzymes are not going to affect the value of delta G but it is only going to speed up the reaction occurring within the living organism. Now inside living organisms there are lots and lots of reactions that are going to couple with each other. So let's take a chain reaction like A is going into B and B is going into C. In this reaction, we have two different type of delta G value. So one is delta G naught one and one is delta G naught two. In order to get the reaction from A to C, we can sum this up. And the sum is the delta G naught one plus delta G naught two. That means that the standard free energy chains are also additive. By this way, inside a human body, we have lots and lots of reactions. So most of the endergonic reactions couple themselves with some of the exergonic reactions, mostly with the ATP and ADP cycle, and perform its function. By this way, the major systems inside the living organisms are working, and we are moving just fine. That's it for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.